Hey, everybody, we're back. And uh, I think for the first time in Zenny 62 media history, I've had two Oakland legends quite literally back to back. I had Donald Lacey on for what turned into about an hour and 10 minutes. And now I have my former boss and the man that I told Donald Lacey I still refer to as boss, Oakland Mayor Elihu Harris, former Oakland Mayor, for those of you who don't want to get confused because the current mayor is Louis Schaff. Elihu, how you doing? Hey, um, want to get you just sort of a round robin of your thoughts on where Oakland is today from a perspective of uh, something that people have asked me about. Do you think Oakland had, where is Oakland today? I mean, if you had, yeah, just we're on the street talking, how is Oakland doing in your view? You said it, something that never dawned on me. You said that Oakland was be was going from becoming a being a town to becoming a city, and it reminds me of how it seemed like there were group, groups of us that were interested in Oakland establishing its own civic identity, particularly in the nineties with you as mayor and then Dick Spees and District Four and a lot of different efforts. But now you're saying that Oakland is feeling more, would you say like a city mean impersonal? How, how do we, how do we think about that? Well, okay. A uh, town, friendly, uh, you know, even when there are problems, people approached it from a neighborhood uh, perspective and, and, all, and part of a collective. Now I think a lot of people who don't know each other, don't even know the people live in the neighborhood or some people live next door. You know, I think all those transformed a place into uh, a, a different kind of a, uh, of an environment, uh, you know. I guess you know. Uh, you know, when I go, I mean, everybody knew everybody. You know, yeah. people knew you, you know, people in your neighborhood. Uh, you know, where you went to church, where you shop. Uh, you know, everybody went downtown Oakland to go to a housewife market. And you know, yeah. now I mean, <laughs> there, there's no market downtown. You know, we, we lost the Spartan Final, which is the closest thing to a market for the people living in an increasingly urbanized downtown area. The only thing you got left is Chinatown. You know, you're absolutely right because Housewives Market was actually something that Mayor Harris established for Oakland and uh, really worked hard to bring. No, I didn't establish it. I kept, I kept it going and, and kept it alive because Housewives Market went back to the 40s, just like Swans. Oh, that's right, 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 that's right. In terms of having the old markets in Oakland that were then revived right. with redevelopment. Right, right. And, and everybody, everybody went down there on Saturday, you know, and, and, and they had everything from, you know, uh, 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 Butchers to uh, uh, you know people with, with broken cookies for fifteen cents a pound. You know, I mean, it was really uh, a place where everybody, the elite, uh, those who are basically you know down, um, uh, you know, uh, down on their luck, could come and inter inter interact and feel comfortable. So, where do we go wrong? Uh, I, I think we forgot to try to be inclusive, uh, and I think that the neighborhoods. Uh, and, and, and the fact that you had people who lived there sometimes intergenerationally is part of what made Oakland distinctive and unique. And it's not that you don't welcome newcomers, but not in such huge numbers that they take away the character, uh, that they destroy sort of the, uh, the fabric that has made Oakland a, a unique place for generations. Does that mean that, I mean, would you... Who do we blame? Do we blame the 10K project and Jerry and then getting rid of redevelopment? Do we blame... I started with that. I mean, some of it was inevitable with the uh, success uh, of technology 
in, uh, in, in, in San Francisco. Uh, just, you know, like when the New York Times called Oprah, grouped them by the day. No, I hate that. In, in large part, that was the recognition oh. of, of, of that reality that, you know, um, that, 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 uh, it's funny you say that because I, I that makes me hurt that 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 Brooklyn by the Bay thing because I felt that was to be honest I felt that was a kind of a patrician East Coast white point of view being kind of poured on an Oakland that always struggled, fought, battled to have itself identified as a separate city and then hear somebody who doesn't live in Oakland is in New York is tied with a newspaper that really has no office in Oakland or news organization saying that we're Brooklyn. I mean, that's that to me, that was, those are fighting words. <laughs> you know, I, I, I mean, I don't know how you felt, but I, I'm ready to fight now. I'm like, what Brooklyn? No. And yet the mayor embraces it. Our current mayor. And it's like we've given up. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. we have? Because you're saying, yeah, well, we I have? Think, I know it's like a lot of people in the city don't know how to fight anymore, and it's not their fault. I mean, you got to have leaders that are willing to fight, and, and else you got to have an agenda that you're fighting for. I mean, to be honest with you, when, when Jerry Brown uh, started bringing um, uh, uh, urban downtown in increased numbers, uh, you know, one, one day he told me, he said, look, he said, yo, I didn't have a plan when I started doing uh, downtown uh, uh, development, I just said it and then I did it. And that to me is a different kind uh, of an agenda when there's no plan, uh, when there's no uh, community discussion or agreement about uh, gentrification or or even, you know, at one point we were talking about a 24 hour downtown. Right. That means you're gonna have uh, work, live, uh, uh, you know, places to shop, uh, entertainment venues, and there just became a place to live out. There are some restaurants and there are some uh, uh, entertainment venues, but it certainly is something that, that is not grown with a sense of inclusion, with a sense of affordable housing, with a sense of uh, maintaining the neighborhood, uh, making it better, not destroying. Do you think we would have had that had Jerry not killed redevelopment? Because he benefited from it and then got to the government right. and he killed yeah. it. Like, for example, you know, if you look at um, uh, Uptown, mm -hmm. there's no affordable housing in Uptown. No. You know, it, 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 it gave them, it gave uh, Forest City the profit with no with no demand for inclusion or affordability. And that was like $70 million he gave them or something? $70 million they got guaranteed profit. Wow. I mean, I, I mean, I, no offense. I mean, Jerry, he got away with it. If I'd done that, I'd have been in jail. Yeah. <laughs> Which, which is what I get. You know, when people look at things differently, you know, if somebody black, they give it away, you know, public money. So right there, well, that's just incentive. He, he incentivized for a city. And that's now, what, you know, you know. I look at it the same way. And Donald. You know, if it's public money and it's not being used for what I consider to be a, a, a public benefit. Now, he, Jerry used it for a public purpose. I don't disagree with that. Mm -hmm. but so I don't know that, what, the, what the public benefit was other than we got housing that was market rate that they made a profit on anyway. Donald and I were talking about that in the guise of in the institutional racism, which I argue has become more fevering in Oakland with barbecue Becky and those, but you, you hit at it. You, you, you said it very casually. Hey, as a black guy, I couldn't, as a black man, I couldn't do that. But by the fact that they let Jerry do that, has Oakland become more institutionally racist? Have we gotten to a point where we don't care about our poor because they're black and minority? I, I could argue that. But look, Jerry Brown was a celebrity mayor. Mm -hmm. The guy who's been the, the, the Secretary of State, uh, of the governor, two terms as governor, and, and a guy who's run for president of the United States. I mean, Oakland was overwhelmed by the fact that a guy uh, would come to Oakland and want to be the mayor. I mean, it, it certainly was uh, not the same when you know, Ron Dellum came back, although the similar kind of hopes that you had a guy who had a national uh, reputation who, in fact, you know, was going to come, uh, and, you know, come into the city and, 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 and really be someone who was going to uh, uh, bring that celebrity uh, to the benefit mm -hmm. uh, of the city. And that's, I mean, so that's not 
as usual. That's all I can tell you. How would you? Usual. To want that. It, it's the result. It's not, I think that people were right in wanting someone who could draw a national attention, a national uh, uh, business, and, and, and all those to come to Oakland, saying, wow, Oakland's on the move. Look, they've got, you know, uh, uh, Jerry Brown, former governor. Must be hot if Jerry Brown, you know, who used to be governor, wants to be mayor of Oakland. They must have really an upside potential. So in that context, where would you place our current mayor and my god sister, Oakland Mayor Libby Schaff, in all this? Well, let me be, be straight, and I don't mean this in any demeaning way. Uh, uh, Libby is a great cheerleader for Oakland, mm -hmm. um, and, and I think people recognize that. The only question is, is that enough? Mm -hmm. You know, is, is that enough? Uh, because she is a booster for Oakland. I, I think she sells Oakland. No one can, uh, I think, uh, criticize Libby for her uh, hard-working effort to sell the city and, and in many ways improve the city. Like, Oakland Promise, certainly, regardless of the criticism, was motivated by a desire to do something positive for Oakland students. You know, you can question a lot of things about it, but certainly I don't think the motivation. No, my, my only question about Oakland Promise isn't the intent. It, I'll tell you, look, I'll, I'll just tell you what it is. I've known Libby for 32 okay. years, okay? okay? We go okay. back to Oakland Cares when she she and her parents got me involved in that nonprofit, which right. did a lot right. of what Oakland Promise does. And that's been her thing for a long, long time. My thing is that Oakland Promise comes at a time when the real problem is the have versus have not society. And yet you have like Michael Colbruno basically on Twitter wrote, Michael Colbruno's planning commission, longtime Politico, but he writes, yeah. you know, don't you want to help the black kids? And I said, Michael, right. how about helping the black adults that have the kids? Right. You want you, you well, to help them get money? Yeah. You, you yeah. see what I'm getting yeah. at? That's my issue. My but, issue but, is... Well, you, yeah, but I, I have a big issue in that. Yeah. Here's my issue. Mm -hmm. My issue is, yeah, you help them get into college, community college. They're not, And that's fine, other than the fact that the problem is in K-12. Mm -hmm. You know, people that get to community college still in the media classes because they haven't learned how to read in the third grade. Yeah, yeah. You know, you got to focus on the total problem, not just say, hey, the problem is they can't get into college. They can't get into college without a degree. Right. They're not graduating high school because they're functionally illiterate. That's the problem. Do you think, having said all, I mean, in that context, what's your thought about the Measure A controversy? Measure AA, excuse me. Well, I, look, uh, they had to go to run the court today to try to do uh, a, a hearing because of the. Uh, uh, the, the challenges at the time was running out. So all I can tell you is, is that yeah, there are a lot of problems, and and I think quite frankly, in all fairness to the mayor, being mayor of Oakland is, is the most challenging, and, and in fairness to me too, is the most challenging political job I believe in the country. I agree. You know, yeah. Resource, yeah. You've got a lot of problems. You got aging infrastructure, um, and not enough tax revenue mm -hmm. because of things like the lack of sales taxes and and, and, and the like to really give you a, a fighting chance. You're under policed. Um, you know it, it, the the, the uh, streets are, are not paved uh, in the hills and the flatlands. I mean, yeah, hope is on and, and and maybe hope is coming. But in the meantime, look, you got to do. Uh, you got to try to make a quarter worth of problem fit on the dime worth of taxes. Hey, you know. and, 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 wait, well, one other thing that is really important I don't think people don't fully understand or realize, mm -hmm. they, they got a structural deficit over a billion dollars. Yeah, that's right. We do. Yeah. Would have that not that's been all. the case if we were able to use redevelopment to, you know, cover over some of those fiscal holes like we used to do in the past? Well, <laughs> they, 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 they went from uh, municipal militia fire to uh, uh, transferring that to CalPERS. Mm -hmm. And, and the municipal fire, uh, uh, police and fire has grown uh, from a couple hundred million dollars to now over a billion dollars. That kicking the can down the road. I mean, they could have done better investments, but they were very conservative. And quite frankly, it was run. It, it, was, it, was, it was a debt owed by the city as a whole, but it controlled by the police and fire unit. Wasn't our treasurer who set that up? What was her name that got us into that? Um, I don't know. I, swap, I don't know. That swap option that you it, voted it against? I don't know. I need the auditor, but I don't know the treasurer. The treasurer was at the point. I don't really blame the treasurer. Because the treasurer was not someone who ran for office. The treasurer was somebody appointed by the, by, by the uh, city manager. Yeah, that's a good point, uh, yeah. Uh, 
I, and, and I think even without the crew of the city council. But that's one of the problems I have with the city manager form of government. Even though I know we don't have it anymore, when I tried to change it, there was concern about, well, I don't know, we don't know who's going to be the mayor of the you know, black radical or whatever <laughs> they thought uh, what might be the future uh, useful authority. But the point was, at least there was some level of accountability. Now we're talking about who do you blame, who knows. It's just a series of bad decisions for the last 50 years or 40 years. And ongoing. So if you right. were to put, if the mayor said, which she should do, I think. Mm. Mayor Harris, I want you to head up an emergency committee that to structure a plan to get us out of this. What would your idea be? Or would you well, be on it? Well, first of all, I think anybody who's in the city has an obligation to contribute, whether or not they're on a committee or just part of a public uh, process that solicits ideas about how to deal with it. Um, I mean, one, one of the things you have to do, looking at long-term social tendencies, is figure out, okay, you're not going to get, get out of it overnight, but you got to start at least reducing it somewhat. Uh, you know, I don't think you get into it by making risky investments and say, oh, let's put the money to take the money to your fingers, put it on red or black, and we've got a 50-50 chance of making money. <laughs> That's not the answer. Uh, but you do have to look at what is the debt, uh, let me look at the actuarial table, let's get the national advisors in here, and people would come and no money to present their ideas. Because everybody can make money and take out an idea that people buy into. And say, look, what we got to have is a 45, 50 year plan. And, and in order to reduce this, uh, it's going to take, I don't know, $30 million a year to, to, to reduce the deficit over a 50 or to eliminate the deficit over a 50 year period. In 50 years, everybody who's in that, in, in that pitch plan in 82 is going to be dead, maybe sooner than that. You know, you start looking at actuarial numbers, you start looking at strategies, you start looking at what the city can handle, but you don't keep kicking the can down the road. When you do it in Washington, we cannot legally do that in California City because of the state constitution, which doesn't allow for debt financing. Hey, shouldn't we be advancing projects at the port, like uh, the port, uh, like the Oakland Balkan Overtise Terminal and airport expansion? I mean, the uh, port's yeah, a cash cow, right? Planning. And, and I'm not trying to put my own horn, but I am saying that everybody's doing it now, which is, you know, we had uh, a zoning, uh, we had uh, uh, a citywide a symposium on planning. Yep. Uh, we, we, we tried to look at the long term strategy, Oakland sharing their vision. Mm -hmm. What is Oakland going to look like in 25 years? Mm -hmm. But no one wanted to do that because it takes time and effort. Let's do a quick study, quick fix. Money at the problem and see what it sticks. Yeah, that's that's But now it seems like there's no. Well, I don't want to say there isn't an effort because, to the mayor's credit, she does have these town halls and beer bashes about the look, you know look, the budget. We're building, we're building tall skyscrapers in Oakland with no parking, assuming <laughs> that everybody who lives in downtown Oakland is going to take part. Now, look, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, look, I'm not trying to put my own horn, but I am saying everybody's doing it now. With no parking. The city threw any parking requirements to the wind. I know the, the uh, 40 acre uh, structure on the site of the old downtown merchant's parking. Uh, this is first in the park and it replaced the parking lot. And the planning commission I let that through. Um, and assuming that everybody who lives in a 40 story building, what, will walk to a job downtown? Get on BART. There's only so many spaces. Look, by the time BART gets downtown open, there's no room to stand on BART. Yep, that's right. So you're going to add 10,000, 20,000 people downtown, and you have 10,000, 20,000 jobs downtown? <laughs> you know, that's not planning. That's just unfettered. But you know what it sounds like? Right. It sounds like right. a continuation of the ideology that Jerry Brown brought in, which is, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm just going to do it. Well, I know any more than that. I was speaking of, I was throwing against the wall to see mistakes. Yeah, and it's falling off. Let's see what let's, let's see what happens. Yeah. That's how I would describe it. Hey, one of my oh, viewers that worked, out, that worked out okay. One of my viewers asked me a question the other night. Wanted to know what your thoughts were. Wanted to know how you would handle the Oakland Raiders. If you realized 
they were trying to leave Oakland or basically this whole situation that has wound up in court. If you were mayor, well, first of all, yeah. how would you have dealt with the Raiders? Well, there, there's a lot of things. One, uh, you know, you try to avoid being reactionary. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we, yeah, but there's some problems that quite frankly should be on uh, the mayor or the city. You got uh, an owner who died, who left it to a, a son who was financially and, and administratively unprepared for that challenge. Mm-hmm. You're saying it's Carol Davis that owns the Raiders and not Mark. Right, right, right. Hmm. This community property state. Ah. That, but, and she doesn't own it completely, but she is the majority owner. So does that also explain why the Raiders established a whole new LLC in Oakland? They have seven different LLCs, um, excuse me, not in Oakland, in Las Vegas. They have seven different LLCs in Las Vegas. And all of the... Hmm. Because they have their the name of the football organization in Vegas is a brand new name. It's not Oakland Raiders. Right. It's something right. else. It's not even AD football. Wow. Um. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I mean, they completely dumped. Yeah. Anything yeah. AD yeah. football Oakland. You know, completely dumped it legally too. And, yeah. Well, one of the things that may help is and if I certainly so interest against them. Is the concept that they've already dumped the name. And if they already dumped the name, then, then why did they see the Oakland Raiders with them? You know, I never thought about that. That's that's a great question. I mean, that is a fantastic question. And I have. I, yeah, they, I mean, they've abandoned the name. Uh, bye. Leave Oakland here. These were the Oakland Raiders historically. So the, the Oakland Raiders no longer exist in your new world. Why are you trying to take our name? Yeah, because they have. I mean, the documents they have don't refer, and I have to look at, let, 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 get a hold of the LLC. I'm sure, but, they, I'm sure they, own, they own something relative to Oakland, but the question is, <coughs> the Raiders is, is the organization. <laughs> right. The transfer, it's like, it's like, how do you call uh, uh, Pacific Bell, Pacific Bell, other than historically, mm-hmm. if you now change it to AT&T? And that's you can't, you can't. There may be aspects of it, and there may be some a uh, uh, trademark, but I don't think that you have an absolute title on that name once there's been an abandonment. Hmm. So you're saying that if they file a whole new set of LLC documents in a new state, uh, and they don't specifically say we are the Oakland Raiders, they could be sued for not using that name for using that name. And, and I'm not saying it's absolute. Wow, that's heavy, Elihu. I, I'll ask the attorney. Uh, that's working yeah, on it. I, I think that's part of the next lawsuit. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure that's a specific argument, but the overall argument there's been an abandonment. They left the Vegas. They built the Oakland, the Oakland Raiders. It was basically uh, a, a, a when they went to LA, they became the LA mm-hmm. Raiders. Mm-hmm. I don't know whether or not there would have been an opportunity at that point to, uh, you know, when they moved to L.A. To, 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 to file this lawsuit. They didn't. But there's no reason they couldn't do it now. I honestly don't believe, as I know those documents, what you're talking about as an argument is represented directly in any page of that document. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, well, I'll be interested to see. I, I haven't read it, so I can't argue with it. No, that's... I do know. Yeah, but I, Go ahead. I do know that that uh, if they formed a new organization, a legal, a legal entity, mm-hmm. um, those are the kind of things that establish abandonment. Wow. Okay, because that's what they've done, Elihu. They have established a whole new a whole new organization that has nothing yeah. to do with Oakland. Right. It all right. 
all the leases, because I've read, I would I would say I've read 80% of the documents, okay? Right, right. They do not at all. There's no document that, that points back to the old documents, the existing documents in Oakland. At all. Yeah. Wow. Hey, folks, we're on with Oakland Mayor Elihu Harris, who's uh, quite possibly thrown up a bombshell. And basically it's that. It, it, you said the, the term is abandonment? Well, if you abandon, uh, it's like abandoning a name. Mm -hmm. you know, now they, I'm not saying they, they, they but let me just, here's the problem. Mm -hmm. the federal, that's why I think it's part of this in federal court. You got uh, a trademark, Oakland Raiders, mm -hmm. and, and you got uh, 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 apparel, you got uh, banners, you got all kinds that say Oakland Raiders. And, you, and, and, and basically, uh, the Raiders own that. Now, ultimately, when they leave, they're not long, they're not, they'll no longer call Oakland Raiders. And, and whether or not they've been able to establish legally a, a continued uh, home on the name Oakland Raiders. But if a new team came into Oakland and wanted to call themselves the Raiders, mm. could they be the Oakland Raiders if there are no Oakland Raiders? Would that be tied to the, the fact that the NFL has not taken their... It also goes to the issue of monopoly. So, ah. so, so the, the NFL can take any names, take a city on it. And so you had the uh, 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 New Orleans Raiders. If there, was, if there was another team, if there were no Oakland Raiders, and, and, and now you got a lot of Vegas Raiders, so that'd be not the best example. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you already saw what happened uh, in, in Cleveland. Yes. Um, So basically, when you leave that sport team, then you in fact need to take a different name. And that's what they did in Vegas. They they have these all the Rain Raiders is in, them, but right. nothing. The new documents don't yeah. openly say they don't call them the Oakland Raiders. Right. And yeah. so, 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 so the question is uh, now. They may have they may have done something legally that I'm not aware of, which would say, look, you know, uh, the Oakland Raiders is our heritage organization mm -hmm. because uh, we, we we were established in Oakland since the eighteen sixties. We have uh, this and that and so on and so forth. Uh, we got museum, we got archives, and all these things, which give us an ongoing uh, financial interest in the name. They may have established those kinds. Of, of that kind of a history. Mm -hmm. um, and, and to the extent they've done that, they may, that's maybe the basis for a legal claim that in fact, uh, the Oakland Raiders will continue, even if the LA, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the Vegas Raiders um, are moving forward mm -hmm. with, uh, with with a new thing. You know, it's like, okay, what happened to the LA Raiders? I don't know. Do, do the Raiders have to have a claim on the LA Raiders too? Well, they gave I up. According to the NFL, Resolution uh, S16 of 2016, the minute the NFL ownership allowed Stan Kroenke to move to Inglewood, the Raiders gave up the territorial right they once owned. Right, okay. Right. But that's the kind of question that will be, that will be raised in this suit. But, you know, you raise an interesting point because I don't know of any document anywhere that specifically says – the Raiders give up their territorial ownership of Oakland the minute they move to Vegas. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, that, that's inside. But my point is, those are the kind of things that make this beyond a frivolous suit and really need to be addressed. So basically what you're saying to me is that that motion to dismiss that has been filed 
is not going to be accepted on June 7th? I don't know, but I think that it, I think it's an open question. It's not, it's not a slam dunk that that, that the uh, Raiders are going to be in a situation where they can simply say, "Hey, you know, we own everything, lock, stock, and barrel." I mean, I, I just don't think they do. But I think the kind of arguments that would indicate that uh, that there's been some uh, again construction of abandonment mm-hmm. of some of these things is a legitimate argument. Hey, maybe you can help us with this too. I. There was a report that I ran that uh, got circulated by a couple of people, but the a two hundred and seventy eight million dollar mechanics fee lien, excuse me, a two hundred seventy eight million dollar mechanics lien was slapped on Las Vegas Stadium Authority and um, the Stad Coach, basically the Raiders, and basically, um, do you? You, can you tell my viewers, do you know anything about mechanics liens and how they work? Yeah, yeah, I know, sure. What what are they? Well, basically, uh, a, a contractor on construction projects uh, has a right to file a lien saying, I have not been paid, I have hmm. until my issue to reconcile and or resolve. And so that's a serious issue, isn't it? Or is it something that's just done? Well, if you're trying to finance it, basically... Uh, the, the bondholders are supposed to come first. The lien holders come in front of bondholders. Wow. Okay. Interesting, because we have so, wow. So, so, so the the lien holders, uh, I'm sorry, the lien holders would have to be cleared probably before anybody would would, would invest in this, because the priority of payment would not be to the. Uh, 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 investors in the bond, as is normally the case, public mm-hmm. bonds, particularly revenue bonds, mm-hmm. but rather to go to the lien holders first, and then whatever's left will proportionally go in, in case of bankruptcy. Or, but you know, again, I, I'm assuming I would, I would not invest in these bonds, knowing that there were liens on my investment. Wow. So basically, what if I told you that the bond issue was already approved by the legislature in 2016? Uh, the bonds were floated. They just they were floated last uh, December. Uh-huh. They had a two year pay go uh-huh. window, so right. they're already the bond right. issue is already out. It's a general obligation okay. bond. It's on the Clark right. County right. General Fund. Right. 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 Yeah, and now and here's a, here's a, here's a, here's a, but here's the problem. I tell you real quick because I understand what you said. Okay, the problem is this, that if there are liens on the property. What you could have is you could have an incredible litigation indicating any number of things, including fraud. Whoa. Because if you said that the bonds, and I don't know the factually whether mm-hmm. these liens were imposed with knowledge uh, before the bonds were sold or the potentiality, but certainly you could indicate that there was, uh, uh, if not fraud, misrepresentation. Wow. Because the, the idea would be that the bonds are being uh, are being sold free of any any lien other than those that have been noted at the time of issuance. You see, at the time they were sold out, the bonds were sold last year. They got six hundred forty-five million. The lien was right. filed this year, February twenty-fifth, by Merrill Steele. And get this: not only is the lien for two hundred seventy-eight million, it has wow. a rider clause that says that. They have the right to adjust the lien anytime they find new any any new change orders. So basically, right. they've already filed this. It identifies one hundred million dollars in cost overruns, which will go even north of that, right? Yeah. And they're just yeah. and they 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 threaten basically to up the value of the lien. Right. 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 Well, and and, and, and they got, in this case of. Carpenters or any or any other contractors who work on that facility until they're paid, they have a legitimate right to, to, to put a lien on that facility until the debt is cleared. Now you have to argue how much is really owed. I think it's say you owe a hundred billion dollars. May not be that much, mm-hmm. but that lien logically, uh, assuming there was consideration uh, expended for that lien, will have to be clear. Wow! And then on top of that, they had what I believe is there the 13th or 14th day of rain where they had to stop building. 
and uh, yeah. they stopped on Monday, but it was so wet they stopped on Tuesday. I don't know if they resumed on Wednesday right. or not. I didn't yeah. check. But all, all these things, all these things, tree across the uh, and, and the question is. Uh, how much will those cost overruns be? Look how much the cost overruns overruns were on the Coliseum in '95 when the Raiders came back. How much were they? Oh, I don't know. They're, they're, they're pretty significant, and because one of the things that Al Davis did, which uh, in hindsight should have been enough for us to not do the project, was he made us hire uh, Tudor Saliba. Now that's and, right. <laughs> and and he, so there was no open bid. Tudor Saliba had to be the um, construction company. And as you may or may not know, Ron Tudor has an incredible reputation for being the master of, of uh, a change order. Oh. So <laughs> I don't know what he's doing the construction in Vegas. It's, uh, more, it's uh, Mortensen McCarthy. Okay. But normally it's very political. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and so uh, whether it was the politicians in um, uh, Nevada or whether or not it was uh, uh, Mark Davis, uh, they probably selected folks that without a whole lot of competition, unless it was required by the uh, issuance of the bond. But oh. to make a long story short, what I don't know is uh, what the what the total of, amount uh, of overruns may or may not be, and what the total number of change orders may or may not be. I, I know half that answer. Uh, I, I Say it's a hundred million dollars. Somebody gotta pay that. Yeah, I mean, it, it's they 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 said the way they wrote it and they filed it in court, it was twenty nine million in identified change orders, and then the remainder totaling almost one hundred million, actually ninety nine million, was in pending right. change orders. But then get this, that's from Merle Steele, and right. Merle Steele, yeah, right. yeah, Merle Steele. I mean, but here's the problem, LU. The site where the stadium is being built is so small that they couldn't have this yard where they they have the steel stored, right? So they had to have the steel stored at 23 different locations. Okay. Then they had to worry about having it delivered, deal with all those complications. And then when it gets there, they don't have enough room to store, but maybe a handful of the trusses that are built. And that's been the problem. This has been a problem going back to when they started working on the project. They didn't tell anybody. Yeah. Yep. They covered it up. Um, yeah, and, 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 that, and trust me, when you get into these kind of arguments, all that stuff will come out. Wow. <laughs> wow. So, so, so I, I would, I, I, it's hard for Ooh. me to imagine, A, there'll be no lawsuits. Uh, now or before this project is completed, and B, there's going to be a real issue as to who's liable for those uh, those uh, overruns and, and or losses. My God. I mean, just, 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 I think the Raiders had very little margin for error in terms of their own finance. That's what, right, that's what, you know, Stephen Ross owns the Dolphins? Right. That's why he voted against it. I remember when I ran him at right. the, De, DeMonico's Steakhouse, he said, right. they don't have any money. <laughs> Right. First right. words out and of his mouth. And that was one of the problems when they were in Oakland. They were trying to sell Blue Sky and nobody would buy it. <laughs> My. You know, I mean, when you're trying to sell debt, I look, with the big mistake Oakland made was not making Al Davis uh, to the revenue now. The, hey, the Raiders would never have left Oakland. They owed money to everybody. And unless somebody like Vegas was willing to pay off their existing debt, they couldn't have left. Wow. Because they would have opened uh, that money. Right now, Oakland owes the money because it's general obligation. Mm -hmm. The Raiders would have owed that money if it was revenue bond. See, well, here's the thing. Right. And here's the thing. They stuck it, and get this, in the in the Vegas case, they stuck it with Clark County as a general obligation bond. It's, oh, okay. Right. It's, right. Yeah, right. it's not a revenue bond. Whereas it was a revenue bond in our case, it, it's not. Right. It's a geo oh. bond. They, 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 it's a geo bond, and I know that. Yeah, but yeah. That's different. So in this case, if you're the general obligation bond, mm -hmm. hey, um, the, first of all, Clark County, it's like they don't have any point. But if these are owed by Nevada and, and, and or the local county, and I don't know how the legislature wrote it, but in the final analysis, here's the problem. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to be able to walk away from this. Uh, 
I, I put property in our lifetime because the money will be owned by the city of Vegas, the county, Clark County, and on the state of Nevada. And they're not going to let the Raiders out of this until they pay it off. Oh, no, and not only that, I'm glad you mentioned that because the mechanics lien specifically uh -huh. mentions a, it's called Stadco. Stadco is Stadium right. Company, and then the legal document, Stadium Company, basically boils down to being the Oakland Raiders. So the Raiders right. are listed right. as one of the debtors, okay? Right. Okay. All right. Well, like I said, nobody's leaving out of there uh, uh, with that debt in fact. So if, even if the Raiders end up losing money, the only hope they – and I'm not sure how this can be discharged in bankruptcy. I just don't know. Mm -hmm. Wow. If, 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 the, if the chill bonds, you can't just uh, uh, discharge it in bankruptcy. If the revenue bonds, you may be able to do that. But like in California – General obligation bonds are probably the safest bonds to invest in because they're based, they're owned by the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. why the interest rate is low. Yeah, I mean you can't make the government a criminal, right? Well, not just that, but the, but the, the taxpayers owe the money. And nobody's a criminal; they owe the money. Yeah. And, and as long as there's tax revenue, uh, it's going to have to go and hold on to pay that debt. Just like in California, in addition to that debt, you also have uh, the uh, pension funds, they got a claim on on, 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 on the uh, state revenues. See, that, this is a big mess because on top of that, there's a company called TAD, T-A-D in big letters construction, and uh -huh. they filed a separate, a, sep a, sep a separate claim that they're owed more money because they said that they found basically imperfections in the ground that they had to, right. where they were exploding caliche, but they said that, right. that they were not told the ground was as right. bad as it was. <laughs> that, 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 you know, a change order, or, 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 or the, and the business begins to think they claim on it. Whoa. And they're underbidded because the bid documents were incorrect, and they bid on information that was proven not to be true. So, hey, I don't know all the financial details, but I can tell you, from what you're saying, it is a legal nightmare. Yeah, that's exactly what is, yeah. And more importantly, maybe a financial nightmare. Yeah, that's exactly what it is, because uh, they kept, tried to keep this, keep this stuff quiet. They And then with respect to steel, I had only said, hey, it looks like they're behind schedule, because all I did was I ran one of the models they put on YouTube, right? I ran it. I compare what they put on YouTube to the actual photographs, and I said, hey, they're behind schedule. Right. So this TV station, News 3, goes to Tommy White, who's one of the union guys, and, and says, hey, we hear there's this rumor about steel. And Tommy White on his own says, I don't know, why don't you go watch, ask Zinni in Oakland? He's always coming up with wrong stuff. Right. Basically right. slandering me on television or you know, trying to. Well, yeah, yeah, I got that. Well, you never call that to too, but here's the deal they really brought that you did. Right, but here's the deal I would suggest that you look at. Okay. One, the, the, the open man dodged the bullet because the Raiders never really had the money to finance this deal. Uh, uh, if, if, if the cost overruns are there, uh, they're going to be assessed, and and and, and, and you know, and, and there's going to be bodies everywhere. <laughs> I, have no I, I would really be interested in looking -hoo -hoo. at the finance. I mean, it's just like, where, 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 what, what, what state is the construction in? Are they about 70% done? How far done are they? Oh, God, they've got a long way to go out with you. There may be about 40% done, 50. Uh, the uh, the steel's built in um, Minnesota and it's shipped. So you can see the frame? Oh, yeah, you can see the frame. It's in, it's, 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 yeah, yeah. All you gotta do is go to Raiders.com, go to the Vegas live stream. I see it in uh, in, in, in Vegas. You can walk around and look at, at the uh frame uh frame that's framed up. Yeah, and you see the frame, you can see where the ground has been like waterlogged because they had that huge yeah. rainstorm on Monday, yeah. like their yeah. record or something like that. And then they had mm -hmm. I mean, this was this year where they say oh, it never rains in Vegas. They've had 13 days of rain in Las Vegas. I mean, some of the uh, 
Yeah. Yeah, I, I heard that it rated in Vegas more than the past whatever number of years. Yeah. I mean, a record. And it just so happens it was this year. Of all the years to have it, it was this year. And so they had it like two months ago. They had six straight days of rain. Uh, no, excuse me. Yeah, six straight days of rain. Uh, they had 10 days of rain and cold weather. They didn't have the cold weather. They had hail. Uh, and then this week, they had another rain they didn't expect, which turned out to be a record for Monday. They had to shut down the airport for a second. So, uh, I think, hey, but hey, this may be the, 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 the uh, ghost of, of Wayne and Gladys Valley. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> He's, <laughs> he's talking about the original. <laughs> the, the mayor is talking about the original owners of the Raiders that got into a tiff with Al Davis. Right, Elihu? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> wow. Man. Wow. Oh, man. Yeah, they, they always say that Al Davis stole it. They say, hey, be, hey, they say be careful what you wish for. You, you get it. <laughs> no, it seems like this thing is just... Snake didn't. It really does because, like, for example, the Review Journal runs this article about these roof trusses, right? And the very day, which is Monday, that the Review Journal runs this article uh, or this post, they say, well, okay, the only thing that we have to worry about is inclement weather if it rains or if the winds go up to above, you know, 17 miles per hour. Well, that same day, guess what? That's when the record rain came, wow. and the winds were up to sixty miles per hour. <laughs> Hello. Wow. Wow. <laughs> well, hey, I, I think this is going to be something to really follow, and I'm not wishing anything bad on anybody because that's not my, my goal. Me neither. Saying, Me neither. Me neither. Uh, uh, like uh, uh, one of my favorite quotes from Maya Angelou: "The truth is a stubborn fact." <laughs> Well said, and, well said. And, 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 and if they're having problems, it's just a fact. And, you know, they, they wanted to go to Vegas because they, they saw uh, a, an incredible amount of cheap, if not free money. And, 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 and remember, you know, freedom ain't free. So they had the freedom to leave Oakland, but I'm not sure that the money was free or anything close to it. And, and, and so they didn't want to they wanted to avoid a lot of debt or, or certainly any change and the famous percentage of ownership that might endanger control of the team. Yeah, you know, that's I'm glad you mentioned that because the original deal was that first they get the seven hundred fifty million from the bond issue, right? Yeah. And then Mr. Adelson, Sheldon Adelson was gonna put in six hundred and fifty million of his own money. Wow. And then on top of that, Bob Goldstein who was and still is their chief operating officer for Las Vegas Sands said that they were taking care of, they're going to pay for all on-site and off-site infrastructure expenses. Wow. Because for him, he's worth $39 billion. As he said himself, you know, the cost of this is a rounding error for him, right? Yeah. So he didn't care. But then... Mark, the two Marks, Bedane and Davis, reportedly, reportedly went behind his back and made it look like they're trying to swindle him out of any possibility right. of getting, right? Yeah. Now, Elihu, I say yeah. it like that because I think it was a setup so that Mark could get the NFL owners to vote for his deal. Because yeah. Adelson, no, right? Yeah. And now, and they yeah, yeah they and, and they did, and they got it, okay? So now he's got it, but... There's something in the middle that's not quite happening because if there were if it was perfectly a ruse just to get the NFL vote, the Raiders would that mechanics lien would not have been written about. Adelson would have been able to write a check, say, "Hey, here, right, go." Cool, you know, there's probably only one town in, uh, in 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 the country that was still public to dance uh, a football stadium. Uh, and that was Vegas. Yep. Because it's the biggest a city in the state, and they keep the state financing. You can't, you couldn't do that in Alabama. No. You know, you might be able to do it for a college because you got endowment money and other kinds of things you can do. And because it's the only thing, and there's no professional uh, competition in Alabama or, or uh, you know, Mississippi. Mm hmm. 
mm-hmm. uh, of Kansas. But there's not enough money in those, or Iowa. There's not enough money in those places to finance five, six billion dollar states. No. So no, anyway, no. Uh, so they went to Vegas. They thought about San Antonio, but even Texas they finance the public stadiums anymore. No, the walls are closing in. <laughs> the the so walls. Said, are, I'm sorry, go ahead. Stupid enough to give us a billion dollars with no no equity required. Let's go to Vegas. They're gambling. <laughs> they'll put the best. They'll, they'll take a chance if they want. They want the legitimacy of being a major league city. Now we got uh, uh, the, the hockey team. And a football team. Yep. And I'm telling you something. Uh, I don't know if you ever go to Vegas during the week. They give rooms away. I've been there. Yeah. Oh, it's a problem. Yeah. But you know, they keep checking on the resort fee, though. I understand all that. But let me tell you something. They got the Friday. Vegas is a two night town. Sunday through Thursday. You can get a room in a nice hotel in Vegas for less than a hundred dollars. That's true. Yep. That's true. You go so if you're paying less than a hundred dollars to stay at Paris or any of those restaurants. And I, you can go online now and look at them and look at them. you'll find some of those three or four star restaurants for thirty nine, forty nine dollars a night. Yep. So I'm just telling you, you look at the reality of of of, of where people are in town and what they want to do when they get there. And a whole lot of people come flying in for the weekend to build a football game. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and the people from L.A., they got two teams now. The Rams and the Raiders. And the Rams and the uh, Chargers. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a nine-hour drive from Oakland to me. If you got nine to ten hours, you're not going to drive to Vegas. And ten, nine to ten hours back, you're not going to take 20 hours for a week to be driving to Vegas to a football game. So you got to fly. Yep. You know, they ain't got, they don't have uh, 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 20 flights uh, uh, on, on Thursday or Friday going to Vegas. And they're all on Southwest. Yep. And you get it. And so after the game, they certainly ain't got 20 flights after uh, 5 o'clock at night to get home. So I just say, if people are not going to fly to Vegas, they may go to a game, but they're not going to buy a single ticket. They're not going to be there every weekend. No, I think the people who are buying them, mostly the local casino folks, just right. may yeah, because... And they, and they, their high rumors don't have that much interest. In going, they want to gamble. Mm-hmm. They don't want to go... Three hours of a football game. And they, they may go to a show after they had a dinner at Caesars, go to the Coliseum and, and see Spain. Mm-hmm. Or, 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 but then I think, like I said, I, 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 I think we'll see. They may have bet the farm and they may have chickens and pigs and cows. <laughs> you know, the plantation days are over. You can't just make it all cotton. That's true. <laughs> We're talking to former Oakland Mayor Elliot Harrison. He's uh, laying down wisdom, logic, and cause common sense regarding uh, Las Vegas Stadium and the Raiders. And uh, you know they should have consulted him. In fact, if, if you're if you're any kind of business that involves uh, politics or construction, you should call Elliot Harris. I'm serious about that. Uh, hey, uh, I know you, you've you been on for about an hour now. This is fun. But I got to ask you, what do you think of the Warriors' chances of being successful in San Francisco? Well, I, I think it's starting off well, but I think there's two problems. One, uh, uh, Lord Goldstein, about fifty five dollars to $56,000 a season uh, at, at, at the Chase Center. Mm-hmm. Uh, that could they're fashionable and winning. As we all know, so are the New York Knicks. And they haven't been in, in, in the finals since 1970. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when Kevin Durant and Steph Curry, and, and none of them, no. all be 36 or older in six years. 
So are you saying that that we're seeing – you saying that the Warriors are done the minute they go to San Francisco? That's it? No, I, 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 I'm saying that it incredibly increased their debt. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what and, if I – but and, you know what? Did you hear and, that – Elihu? They're betting on the cup. They're betting going to continue to be able to charge that kind of money to go to their basketball game. I, I, you know what? You know what the show? Hmm. The show, and, yeah, and, and if you look at like uh, Oracle and, and and more important Chase Bank, yeah. you know, uh, spending that kind of money to be associated with the winning team, uh, yeah. I mean, so far it's worked for the Giants. Have you seen what's going? How many people going to Giants games now? No, it, it doesn't look like it used to be. It ain't sold out. No. I remember when they used to sell it all the time. And you can get tickets for the Giants games now for ten dollars or less. Wow. Wow. Well, I don't, hey, I used to go gamble every once in a while and I may spend a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, and they give me a free room and I used to consider it part of the room <laughs> I, I just don't do it. But on that you note know? though, given what you're saying, should we expect any better success if the A's build in Howard Terminal? I happen to think they would be wildly successful for three years. What do you think? Uh, uh, well, first of all, uh, they're going to have to invest more in salary. Mm-hmm. I mean, look, this year they got some exciting young players, but they got the pitch. Yeah. So they're still losing. Uh, you know, you, 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 the weather is not going to be, it's going to be colder in, East, in, in, in downtown on the water. Than it is in the Coliseum. Mm-hmm. That's true. Uh, and they're not building enough businesses downtown for people to go to day That's very true. All the people go downtown, they got jobs in San Francisco. They think of it all to the middle of the day to go to their baseball game. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the, the Giants made it because there were so many jobs downtown that people would take off in the middle of the day from the job. At 12 o'clock, at 12 15, at 12 45, or whatever it was. Yep. Go to watch a game and not go back to work. Mm-hmm. Everybody coming back to open at 12 o'clock. <laughs> we would have to build a whole new downtown there, don't you think? Uh, look, they didn't leave any space for other than the um, Blue Shield, mm-hmm. they don't jobs downtown. No. So you don't tell me. There's no jobs downtown. Where, where, you know, where, where, where are the people coming from to go? You, you, you're not going to drive downtown and in the middle of the day there's nowhere to park. So on a day game, where are the people coming from? Kaiser? Where, where are they coming from? I think the A's are betting on, and I'm not saying this is a good bet, okay? And, I, and I'm basing it on their current performance, the, the attendance performance of the Coliseum is awful. Uh, but part of that, part of that is look, they were doing, doing pretty well when the Haas people had it, right? Well, they're doing wonderful, yeah. But, but the Haas people were investing in the players. Mm-hmm. True. How are you going to make a seven or eighty million dollar payroll when there are some teams like the Angels mm-hmm. paying my top in the dollars by itself? But I gotta ask you, don't you think part of that is a base is baseball today is just not as popular as it was when the Haas owned the A's? I, I, that's undoubtedly true. But 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 you gotta you gotta look every time the A's get a really good player, mm-hmm. you keep them two or three years, and they gotta give them up a trip today. Yeah, true. <laughs> so the younger player, when he says he or she or he is maturing. Four or five years, you got to get him up. Yep. So you don't have a chance to have fan identity with the team. I mean, other, other than uh, uh, Crush Davis, uh, Chapman, uh, I mean, I can't name off the top of my head, and I've heard of their, their name, any of the starting pitchers. No, not that. And, and you know, the, the highest paid baseball player <laughs> in baseball today, I mean, someone did an analysis or a survey. That person wouldn't be recognized walking down the street of any American city. Look, look, look. <laughs> the, the highest profile player on the 
child is not that from God. And mm-hmm. he's not a child either. I, I can name the giant starting pitcher, uh, uh, including uh, uh, including Mad Mom and and uh, who's the other guy who's uh, uh, which guy would take the A's and make left to go to Giants. Oh, you're talking about um, um, right. the guy who went to go today. Gerardo Para? Uh, Para? No, no, no. That's another picture. My point on all that is, is that none of these guys are winning. Remember the guy that got from Cincinnati? I can't say his name. He's not winning. Yeah, I know. But that's. Right. I knew their names. I can't even remember their names. <laughs> Now, that is bad, though. You know? Yeah. And they, gave, and they gave him a huge contract. Huge contract. The, the only name I know of is Chris Davis. Right, right. That's the A's. Yeah, they, the A's. They, they gave him an extension. Yeah. But he ain't got no pitching. He only had enough home runs to win every game with four runs a home run. No. And and that begs the, the thing. You know, the A's, uh, they've been on a losing streak. Right. Yeah. Every game they had to get Toronto as a Yeah. <laughs> it's horrible. Look, look, I'm glad that the – and I went to a, a meeting and um, old Oakland, a neighborhood people, about this whole idea of the uh, gondola. Yeah. We, we, oh, great. I, Fill us in. What happened? People are really concerned about those gondolas. That, they say, have they floating over our heads? Have we been able to look at our windows in our backyard? Wow. You know, I mean, they, they got all, and they start backing off immediately, but just the idea, we're not locked in, that's why we're here to hear your concerns, you know, and, and but what's going to happen, uh, you know, the other uh, 250 days a year, when, when, when the guys are, are, are working, are running, I mean, are there no, no baseball. See, my concern about the gondolas is uh, what if they stop in uh, midair, because that's happened. And then the other thing is, is why do we have gondolas rather than having people have a plan for people to stop at different businesses along Broadway, right? Right. Help right. help right. the business right. make money. You know, that's my issue. I, 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 you know, I know that they wanted to go to, to, to the Brown College district site, and I understand the logic of that. I really don't understand the logic of how a terminal, uh, because of the train track and nothing else. But hey, I, I got my money, not my team. Well, I get the lo- yeah. I get the logic of Howard Terminal. If you're willing to do what they're doing with the legislature, I told Dave Cavall two years ago. In fact, I didn't tell him. I wrote him a spread. I wrote him an email. I made him a spreadsheet, and I showed him that he can make over three hundred three hundred fifty million dollars on tax increment financing from a tax increment financing district around where he wanted to build at Howard Terminal. And use eighty five million of that for affordable housing, right? And he swore up yeah. and down. Yeah. yeah, they are actually. Nancy Skinner's got a bill. I, 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 don't, I didn't hear they're doing affordable housing down there. That's what he told. That's what I read. Yeah, he said, "Well, maybe it's a mixture of market rate and affordable." Uh, are you talking about out of the Coliseum that's doing affordable housing? No, 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 no. Howard Terminal at Jack London. It's a I, mix. I don't, I don't think they've got enough land to do that, but maybe I'm wrong. Oh, uh, the, I'll, look, I'll look. I'll get an update. Yeah, when you have uh, a chance. When you have a chance, take a look at the latest version of the A's design. There's a there's a set of buildings behind it. All right, okay. those buildings are twice the size of the original plan. That's the housing. So they're, uh, they're be- uh, yeah. I, I don't know how you get on, on that pedestrian traffic the railroad track. I just this will be that mm-hmm. every time they happen. Yeah, that could happen. <laughs> hey, you know, yep. I'm gonna let you go because we could talk forever. Uh, hey, hey, always good talk to you, man. You hey, too. Keep up the good work, City 62, now and forever. Oh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, I'm coming back to you for part two on this because we have a lot to talk about. I gotta, I gotta get caught up on the mechanics thing. Thing, I gotta check out the ownership thing. You dropped us a bombshell regarding, uh, what's called abandonment. So I got homework right. to do. All right. Well, let's see where we are. You got it, man. All right. I'll see you. That was former Oakland Mayor Elihu Harris. I could have talked to him 
for another hour. Um, and this has been a stellar night because I had on Donald Lacey, who's going to be on Van, Do Van Jones' show, The Redemption Project, May 12th, Mother's Day, talking about how he's going to meet face-to-face -face for the first time. He's already done it. He's talked about what happened on my show. The man who shot his daughter in 1996. Something that uh, I meant to t bring up. Yeah, uh, great guy. Yeah, he's was my boss, still mentor as Black Lion Supreme says, "Thank you, Mr. Mayor." And he dropped some knowledge. Basically, uh, he told uh, he told me something I got to check out. That we were talking about the whole issue of how he would have handled the Raiders, which, and I'll tell you who started me thinking about talking to Elihu about that, and that was John Amanderas, who's had a question about how the mayor, I didn't see John tonight, I did earlier, but how the mayor would have handled, Mayor Harris would have handled the Raiders situation. And what Elihu said was that um, basically we were talking about how the Raiders, he said he thought it was a name in colors, and I said, no, that's actually money. And he said, okay, so we were talking about the, the uh, and so he said that there is, I point out to him that the documents that the Raiders are using to identify the corporation in Nevada are entirely new documents. They've, they've set up an entirely new corporation. And he says, that's abandonment. And I thought, wow. Because the question is, do the Raiders have two things? First, do the Raiders have a contract with the NFL that says when you are in Las Vegas and the stadium is open, one thing happens. The non-relocation clause kicks in. But does that mean, from the NFL's perspective, you have no right to return to Oakland. You have no idea. You close the door on Oakland. Oakland is a wide open market. That's the other question. And it also leads to something he calls abandonment because his claim is in theory that if the Raiders are quite literally abandoning Oakland, then his point is they're also abandoning the name, right? It's the Oakland Raiders. You're, But you can't take the Oakland Raider name with you. You're abandoning it. You see, that's interesting. And so I got to follow up with the current lawyers and see what their thinking is on that. Because that's something that I am I know isn't presented in the current lawsuit. Okay, that's, that's major. But see, Elihu is a trained lawyer, all right? Uh, Libby is a trained lawyer too, but Elihu is on another plane. <laughs> Black Lion says it's the same thing that happened in Cleveland. But see, we we're talking about Cleveland, but the difference though is that you know I'm, I have to research that again because I was under the impression that what happened in Cleveland was that well they never got to court. That I remember. Remember. But I have to read exactly what caused them to get to a point where they didn't wind up in court. And it might be worth, um, is he still with us? Mayor, My The former mayor of Cleveland, Michael White. Um, Michael White, Cleveland mayor. Let me see if he's still with us. Um, he is uh he's he's 67 years old now. Uh yeah. And he was mayor of Cleveland. He's still alive, thankfully. I'm gonna see. Let me see something here. He was born August 13th, 1951. Yeah, he's Leo. Ding. Um 
controversy. Hmm. Um, I'm going to see if I can get Michael White on. You know? I'm going to see if I can get Michael White on as a guest. That's what I'll do. That's what I'll do. Yeah. Little homework there. <laughs> so, um, Black Lions, unknown Raider guy says to Black Lion and us, he says, you have to think Cleveland immediately filed a lawsuit. Oakland waited until last minute. We did wait. We shouldn't have waited. We did. Bad stuff. We did wait. Um, you're absolutely right about that. We, we did wait. And as I said, we should not have waited, but we did wait. Um, okay. Folks, uh, I've been on since uh, 10 o'clock. It's 1240. So I am going to get out of here and get ready for what promises to be a boom and zoom in Thursday. <laughs> Hey, thanks, everybody. Um, and uh, this has been fantastic, you know. Oh, Black Lion says, yes, but Oakland has a better case than Cleveland did. There's no valid reason to move the Raiders, even by the rules of the NFL. True. Uh, particularly when there's lack of good faith involved. Hey, let's do this. Let's pick this up tomorrow because I want to investigate something, something that's on my mind and some other work I've got to finish. This has been fantastic. All right. I'll see you guys later, guys and gals. Thanks again. See ya. Uh, remember, Thursday. See ya. See ya, Thursday. Okay. Thanks again.